Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. The title of today's episode is Should Retired Persons Consider Living in Colombia? This is also in response to a question and an email I received from a viewer and his abbreviated and edited messages on the screen. I am 60 plus years old, retired and widowed, had a good marriage and loved wife very much. Western world dating culture, it's awful. I became disabled and became reliant on an electric mobility scooter to get around. I am not able to drive currently. I live in a 55 plus independent senior community in the USA. I started to get waves of depression. I knew I had to do something, so I joined an international dating site. This proved ultimately to be a disaster to say the least. I met hundreds of women on the internet, but none of them understand slash want to understand what love really is. This includes people from other countries like Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Denmark, Ukraine, Italy, Spain, Germany, et al. I particularly like Latin women. There is a phenomenon on dating sites which perverts the traditional dating culture, to say the least, not too distant from proverbial prostitution. Quite honestly, my friend, I'm fed up. I get along with people very well, know some Spanish, don't have trouble meeting women, have lived in the Caribbean. I love the land culture and believe, and believe you me, the women are the most beautiful in the world. I have had relationships with Latinas in the past. I know that my disability complicates things a bit and I was looking for your input here. Would appreciate any advice you can give me. Sure, no problem. This is to answer this man, but also someone else, any, anyone else who may find themselves uh, to be disabled and uh, for men generally, because, um, you know, we may wind up in a similar situation one day and, and uh, it can't hurt to have this knowledge. So let's begin. Number one, online dating is a swamp. All the men, including my clients, myself, down in Cali, we, uh, Colombia, we generally report having a good time or at least a decent time meeting the women without much difficulty. Uh, this is for all the men who are meeting women, primarily you know, going to the clubs, going to the salsa classes, just uh, being introduced uh, by their wider social circle, friends, and, or even cold approach during, during the day. Uh, it, it's pretty evident right now that online dating is... is is just the the return on on time and investment is just continuing to go down so i no longer recommend it nor do i think that you should limit yourself to online dating especially if you get boots on the ground and you're physically in colombia once you get there this should not be the main method you rely on point number two is colombia is the friendliest social and dating environment for a man that I've been able to find in all my travels uh, around the world, especially in the city of Cali, Colombia. And while I'm not saying that they are at in any way the same, I've listed below all the things which men commonly complain about, which makes it so that they can't successfully meet the type of women they would really like in their home countries, such as the USA, Canada, England, or Australia. This is, you know, men with very modest earnings or, you know, limited or capped earning potentials. <laughs> and in the case of Cali, even guys that were homeless, uh, short or very short, limited Spanish, all races, Asian, black, white, whatever, like guys that are not great looking, not physically impressive at all, seniors go check out the link in the description below to my interview with cliff who's 67 years old none of us are at least none of us that have a plan to meet women in real life are reporting that this is that these are like major impediments so while being disabled and being limited to a mobility scooter isn't something i have direct experience with Based on, you know, what I, I've thought about here, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that I also do not believe that 
that would be a like a severely like hindering or deal breaking thing when it comes to dating in Colombia because every other factor doesn't seem to be a uh, major deal breaker or like a game ender so you might as well come try it out you won't know until uh, you do try and I personally I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem point number three is wheelchair salsa and bachata dancing is an actual thing and if you're willing to give it a try i got a team multiple teams rather that are willing to try it with you and while i doubt that many of them have any experience with uh wheelchair salsa dancing me just looking at one video of it and i can figure it out too and these people are far more talented at me than and creative uh, when it comes to uh, salsa dancing. So an example of it is on the screen, on YouTube. Check it out. Go look up wheelchair salsa dancing. I turn off the video, the audio, so that I don't get this video demonetized. This guy can move. Okay, all right, so that's wheelchair salsa dancing. If you're willing to try, my team is willing to try with you too in, in, in Cali, Colombia. Point number four is Medellin is very hilly. Some parts of Cali may not be suitable, such as the west and the north side, which is up in the hills. Bogota is not quite as hilly, but it's colder. So uh, I think you're going to have better luck in the bigger cities uh, and the available transportation options compared to the small towns. Um, this can be explored further, uh, should you wish. Point number five is the ADA, the Americans with Disability Act, does not exist. And I can tell you as a construction professional that installed ramps and rails and grab bars and, um, and and all sorts of other stuff, uh, braille. Um, I'm fully cognizant of what is needed to create a fully accessible uh, space, including sidewalks, curb cuts, ramps, etc. It's not good in Colombia. Just generally poor. Even the public transportation system is only partially accessible. Heck, as a person that's not disabled and just going, walking down the streets, sometimes I see things that I just don't understand how it's even possible. Ramps that are this steep leading into a house, that, that's basically a death trap for people that are, for regular <laughs> uh, non uh, disabled people that are that are walking and it's you know, holes in the ground. I mean, it, that is definitely going to be a challenge. Uh, moving on is do some short term trial runs. Uh, you, you're going to need to go visit some cities. Really give it a a dry run and see whether your needs are going to be able to be met with the available resources, including whether the terrain is suitable for you. Some homework and investment and time may be needed. So email me if, if you're interested. We can talk more about that. But for sure, if, if you're in this position, do not just sell all your stuff, pick up and move, expecting that things will be uh, workable for you there because it may not be. Okay, some homework and trial run is required. Point number seven is be prepared for frustration and things not going according to plan. As if, it as if life wasn't generally stressful enough and troublesome enough as a man, you have to deal with your condition and then you have to deal with the general uh, slowness, unreliability, and some would call it chaos of Colombia. So just be prepared to be, to be patient and uh, not, not to flip out. And 
for you to really live in the style that you want with all the help that you need, it may take a little bit of time on the ground to really ramp up and build build a plan, build backups on backups on backups so that you'll be covered in, uh, in daily life and also in case of emergency. Point number eight is small cities and towns need to be investigated on a case by case basis. While there are a lot less cars, we can get to situations where you may not want to be in such as dirt roads, non-existent sidewalks, uh, again, the, the up and down on the hills, no real transportation options close by. Uh, that's something to really consider. If for And for exploring small cities and towns, you want to make a major city your base and then take day trips out to the surrounding towns as needed, okay? With plenty of planning ahead of time to make sure you know where to stay and that your transportation needs are going to be covered. Point number nine, is a live-in maid could be life-changing. I'm still doing my research and hopefully soon I'll be producing a video on uh, the live-in maid in Colombia. But for a modest cost, you might have someone to be able to take care of you on a full-time basis living in the same place as you, 24-hour um, care if needed, and it could be done affordably, right? Um, another thing I also thought about, uh, which, which I'll make a video on in the future is that Rappi, the app, R-A-P-P-I, in addition to being sort of like a Uber Eats for food delivery, the folks can order, can, can, uh, pick up your food and pretty much anything else you need from the, uh, from the major big box stores, such as Exito, which is the Walmart of, of Colombia. So that's also another option. Uh, if you can't go there, they can come to you and anything can be had at a price, including having a helper, an assistant, uh, a driver doing these things for you. So that could be very flexible and affordable at the same time. Point number 10 is transportation in the major cities is generally available. One example I have up on this screen here is this, Emerdom Limitada. This is, uh, 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 looks like a, a Cali, Colombia based uh, transportation de discapacidados. Uh, I've seen these before, not very frequently, but I know they do uh, exist. And this is something to look into. For sure, they exist in the major metropolitan cities of Cali, Medellin, and Bogota, with this example being in Cali, Colombia. So I hope this video has been interesting and informative for you, sir. Um, you know, we can continue dialoguing on uh, via email as you wish. Um, everyone else, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If any of you folks need some help with planning a trip to Colombia or with organizing your life, Please email sayenchan at potomail.com to inquire more about Say and Chan life coaching and consulting. If any of you folks would like to support me and my work, please consider doing so on Subscribestar or via one-time donation on Cash App or PayPal, all links in the description below. YouTube subscriptions, memberships, and also Super Thanks are also live, but they take 30%. And while help is always appreciated, please consider using the primary three methods already mentioned. Everyone else, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. This is Saiyan Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.